Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we have got quite an interesting feat on our hands. We are going to investigate the Taleb ratio proposed by the famous um, option trader and statistician Nassim Taleb in the 90s, which has quite a bit of use uh, among the practitioners, but not necessarily that much fame in the academic circles. And what is most interesting about the Taleb ratio is that it relates marked efficiency, that is trending or mean reverting behavior of a particular price series with different volatility measures. And we have investigated um, different types of um, volatility estimators from uh, uh, intraday candles, such as open, high, low and close prices in one of our previous video series. In particular, we discussed Parkinson volatility, which uses high and low prices uh, instead of the close on close or close on open volatility that is more common. And arguably, as stated in the literature of those alternative volatility estimators, using not only uh, closing prices but also opening high and low prices can yield more information with regards to the performance or the behavior of your price um, series. However, it turns out this particular correspondence between varying volatility estimators can also be useful to test for market efficiency or the properties of the series itself. So let's start by calculating the um, logarithmic uh, high and low and close and open statistics for each of our uh, trading days. And by the way, we have got five years worth of data on S&P 500 with open, high, low, and close for each of the trading days. So first of all, the natural logarithm of high divided by low and the natural logarithm of close onto open. Those are very natural inputs into the uh, Parkinson and close onto open uh, volatility estimators. So we can enforce them for all of our trading days and then deal with rolling um, estimators of volatility using these daily entries. And here, the choice of the time frequency is again more of an art than a science, really. But let's uh, stick with uh, two months worth of data that would correspond for the US market to 42 trading days on average. So as we start in row two here, we should start uh, at row 43 if we wish to sample 42 day rolling windows. And uh, here we can uh, discuss how to calculate our Parkinson and close to open volatility estimators and the theoretical relationship between the two. So obviously uh, high divided by low is necessarily in terms of the absolute value higher than close divided by open as the market can open uh, higher than it's low, most commonly it does and the market can close quite um, lower than its uh, daily high, and most often it does. And Parkinson has proven in um, the famous 1980 paper that the uh, relationship is actually quite simple. The theoretical ratio between the variances um, sampled using the Parkinson method and the close to open method should be four times the natural log of two, meaning that the ratio of the uh, volatilities estimated that way should be the square root of this figure. So the square root of four times log two. And as um, shown by uh, Nassim Taleb himself, this particular constant is roughly equal to 1.66. So basically you would expect under normal circumstances when your uh, price movements are independent of each other, uh, intraday uh, frequency considered, the Parkinson volatility um, should be uh, 1.66 times higher than the close to open volatility. 
but it's more natural, arguably, for hypothesis testing and comparison to perform this adjustment straight away when calculating the volatility, dividing by four uh, natural logarithms of two in the uh, denominator here. So let's do the following. Let's start in row 43 and calculate Parkinson volatility and close to open volatility. So for Parkinson volatility, we introduce the sum squared of high divided by low. In the denominator, we have 4 times the natural logarithm of 2 times the length of our rolling window, which is 42, as we discussed, 2 months. And we have got the square root to impose uh, finally. And that gives us a Parkinson volatility estimate of 0.34%. And uh, likewise, we can do the close to open volatility estimator as well, without the four natural logarithms of two adjustment. So we just divide by 42 and take the square root. Obviously, there can be sample adjustments divided by n minus 1 instead of n, but it doesn't um, have any um, effect on our uh, further calculations and uh, efficiency tests. So um, stick with either n in both cases or n minus 1 in both cases. That would not affect the results at all. And now we can uh, impose these formulas throughout and calculate the so-called Taleb ratio, which is the ratio between the Parkinson volatility and the close to open volatility for a particular uh, sample. So here, for the first 42 trading days, the Taleb ratio is 1.09, meaning that the Parkinson volatility is higher than the close to open volatility, and we can perform the same calculation for all of our sample days, graphing them uh, on a simple line chart over here. So we can see that the uh, Taleb ratio between Parkinson volatility and close to open volatility does indeed fluctuate around 1, meaning that intraday on high frequency data, um, independent uh, behavior, marked efficiency is quite the norm. However, there are deviations from one um, in both directions, most notably here in 2018. We have got um, a spike as much below 1 as 0.77 and an upward spike as much higher than 1 as 1.3. And here we have to discuss why this uh, has anything to do with um, marked efficiency, training or mean reverting behavior at all. So consider a mean reverting series. A mean reverting series uh, on an intraday frequency would have uh, a larger gap between high and low prices than between close to open prices than you would expect it naturally. As if the series is mean reverting, it's likely to reach low lows and high highs uh, during a shorter time period than um, an independent series. And for a trending series, if it's just trending upwards or trending downwards, it's quite uh, common for highs or lows to coincide with closes. That would mean that the Parkinson volatility estimator would be smaller, corresponding to the close to open estimator, than you would uh, have assumed otherwise. And that's why low, lower than one values of the Taleb ratio correspond to trending behavior, and high, higher than one, values of the Taleb ratio correspond to the mean reverting behavior. And that's exactly what Taleb himself used in uh, his 1990s textbook to sketch the um, behavior of um, some notable uh, financial market series to determine when uh, mean reverting or trending behavior kicks in. He most uh, often uh, cited mean reverting behavior and not much in terms of the trending behavior, but the concept is generalizable onto both. However, um, how likely it is that this particular ratio would deviate from one in either direction just by random chance alone? We have to do some formal hypothesis testing, isn't it? And here the fact that we have calculated the ratio uh, in terms of one as our benchmark statistic and not as 1.66 as our benchmark statistic does us a very good service because we can use the F-test for the equality of variances, and here we quite naturally have the ratio between two volatilities. 
meaning that the ratio between the two variances would be the squared Taleb ratio. And that means that either the square of this figure or the reciprocal of that, one over this ratio squared, would be our F stat. And our F stat can be calculated as the maximum of Taleb ratio squared or one over the Taleb ratio squared. And we can look at the dynamics of the f-stat across our sample and see that there are two notable spikes in 2018 corresponding to these two. So the f-stat is um, positive and above 1 um, when there are notable uh, deviations from uh, parity uh, between the variances in either direction, that is. So here we can calculate the critical value of the f-stat and plot it alongside it to determine uh, when it does break through this particular level. And here we can use the uh, f-inverse right-tailed function and consider that we have got a two-tailed test. When we know the two variances or the two volatilities, we already know in which direction uh, do we expect uh, the uh, F-statistic to go. So here, if we are uh, concerned with um, significance of 10%, we have to divide it by 2 further to have a two-tailed test instead. And then, for the degrees of freedom, we need to remember the length of our sample size, which is 42 minus 1 for the conventional degrees of freedom reduction, and 42 minus 1 is our second degrees of freedom as well, as both variances are estimated on the same uh, rolling sample. And here we see that our critical uh, f-stat is 1.68, and we can enforce that all the way down and have this uh, orange line represent the critical boundary. And we see that indeed we break through this critical boundary twice in 2018, once we go into the trending direction, and once we go into the mean reverting direction. And that's how you apply Parkinson volatility, closely open volatility to the lab ratio, uh, alongside some basic hypothesis testing using the F distribution, test for market efficiency, or if you detect inefficiency, you can quite easily and intuitively check whether it's trending, persistent, or mean reverting and type persistent. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider support us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.